Okay, let's move to next case scenario. Your patient is a 55-year-old woman with a history of type 2 diabetes. She has been working at the post office for over 25 years. She complains of chronic pain in her left shoulder that has been bothering her for over nine months. She claims that her pain is more intense at nighttime and she feels uncomfortable to lie on her left shoulder. She reports that the pain is easily aggravated by movement. On examination, there is a global loss of active and passive range of motion and there is pain at the end range of the motion in her shoulder. There is also a global loss of passive glenohumeral joint movement. To manage the patient, you ask her to lie on her right side, and then you sequentially performed a seven-step articulatory procedure on her, assuming that the last step consisted of stretching tissues and pumping fluids with the patient's arm in extended position, which of the following options is the most probable diagnosis? Rotator cuff injury, referred pain from cervical spine, glenohumeral arthritis, shoulder adhesive capsulitis, biceps tendinopathy. Well, let me give you the correct answer and then explain it for you. The correct answer is shoulder adhesive capsulitis. The procedure that we performed on her is the Spencer technique, which is used for the patients with shoulder adhesive capsulitis. And we perform it on the patients in lateral recumbent position with the affected shoulder on top facing the physician. So why do they call shoulder adhesive capsulitis frozen shoulder? Because there is significant loss of range of both passive and active glenohumeral joint motion in all directions. What are the most common causes of frozen shoulder? Pre-existing shoulder injury due to tendinitis, bursitis, or rotator cuff injury. What types of patients are more prone for getting frozen shoulder? Patients with a history of diabetes mellitus, patients with osteoarthritis of the shoulder joint, patients with a history of chest or breast surgery. Let's look at the Spencer technique. It is indicated for adhesive capsulitis, rib somatic dysfunction, and upper extremity edema. You put the patient in recumbent position and you sequentially follow through these seven steps. First, you extend the shoulder while keeping the elbows flexed. Then you flex the shoulder while the elbow is extended. Then you do circumduction and compression, of course, with the flexed elbow. Then you perform traction and circumduction with flexed elbow. Then you do adduction and external rotation of the shoulder with flexed elbow. Then you do internal rotation and abduction, abduction of the shoulder. In this step, the arm of the patient should be behind his or her back. And finally, we do the passive stretching and we perform the pumping action. In this case, the arm and elbow are both extended. So there are seven steps. And the first letter of the seven reminds me of the first letter of the Spencer as well. A mnemonic commonly used by many osteopathic students to remember these seven steps is elephants fart constantly to annoy intelligent people. Sorry for the vulgar language.
you can use your own imagination to make your own mnemonics to remember these seven steps of the dispenser. You can use statements such as examine frozen capsulitis tender arthritic inflamed points, ethodulac for calming tender arthritic inflamed points, early folks can tolerate arthritic inflammatory pain, early females cannot tolerate arthritic inflammatory pain, or you can say early females can tolerate arthritic inflammatory pain, even Phenoprofen cannot treat all inflamed points. So anyhow, use your imagination. You can make your own mnemonics, and those mnemonics can help you to remember these concepts in the future when you need them. In which steps of Spencer technique the elbow is extended? Actually, it is extended in two steps, step two and seven. It is flexed in all others. So the two steps. One is the stage two, when you flex the shoulder. And the last one is the last step, when you perform the pumping action for the lymphatics. In what step of Spencer, the arm is behind the back? This is step six or stage six. Stage six was internal rotation plus abduction or abduction. Spencer technique can be used for both evaluation and treatment of frozen shoulder. Which of the following options is a contraindication of Spencer technique? Minor shoulder fractures, shoulder muscle spasms, healed rotator cuff tears, shoulder tissue fibrosis, subacute glenohumeral dislocations. The contraindication is option A, minor shoulder fractures. Fractures, inflammation, and infections are major contraindications of a Spencer technique. Spencer is used to treat adhesive capsulitis, healed fractures. So you can use it after the fractures are healed. We can also use a Spencer for subacute dislocations and other conditions that limit glenohumeral motion. Can a Spencer technique be modified to accommodate muscle energy techniques as well? The answer is absolutely yes. These days we do it quite commonly so.